A turn-based grand strategy game on the scale of Total War Three Kingdoms often struggles to present a consistent and meaningful challenge across hundreds of turns and dozens of battles. With this foray into ancient China, however, Creative Assembly seems to have finally hit an elusive sweet spot with its campaign tuning. A political and tactical landscape that's almost never boring, filled out with gorgeous, stylized graphics, an excellent character system, and massive performance improvements over previous games in the series leave no doubt who the new emperor is around these parts. Three Kingdoms offers you two ways to conquer its sprawling, attractively exaggerated map of 200 CE China. Records mode is closer to classic historical Total War, where generals are mere mortals accompanied into battle by a bodyguard regiment and real-time engagements play out slower and less decisively. It also sometimes led me to feel like I might as well be playing any other historical Total War game, though. The campaign really comes alive in Romance Mode, which is based on the semi-historical novel about the era, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I cannot beat their strength! Perhaps retreat faster! This turns your generals into demigod-like kung fu action heroes who engage in dramatic duels and can take on hundreds of normal soldiers single-handedly. Both modes put a strong emphasis on the larger-than-life characters driving the action, including quippy banter both before and during battle that helps bring them to life. You fight like your wife! I fought my wife! That's a compliment! But some of the fun and character is definitely lost if you're sticking closer to the history books in records mode. Spotlighting named characters helps make up for the fact that the armies themselves aren't quite as diverse or interesting as, say, the Warhammer Total Wars or even Thrones of Britannia's. We're back in the land of swordsmen, spearmen, archers, and cavalry in various configurations, maneuvering to best exploit the rock-paper-scissors relationship between different troop types. And there aren't competing ethnic groups to shake things up, since all the action takes place between factions that are decidedly Chinese. Diversity in army composition is encouraged in other ways, however, as troops are recruited to a specific character's retinue, and armies are made up of one to three of these. Also, each general has a class. Vanguards are great at shattering enemy formations and get bonuses to recruiting and leading shock cavalry, for instance while strategists focus on passive buffs instead of direct action and improve recruitment and performance of archers. So you'll want to compose forces around complementary generals with regiments that take best advantages of their bonuses. And it's not always just a matter of picking the statistically best officer for the job. Characters can develop friendships and rivalries over time, which adds an interesting wrinkle into organizing your forces. Two hotshot generals who hate each other might resent being placed in the same army, just as those who are fighting beside their sworn brothers will perform better. And that's before you even get into the deeper political considerations, like the all-star champion you just hired deciding he wants a more prestigious political office and threatening to abandon your faction if you don't give it to him. Looking at you, Lu Bu. Whoever ends up leading your armies, they're in for quite a challenge. Far better than any previous Total War game, Three Kingdoms lays on diplomatic and military pressure early and somehow manages to maintain it even many dozens of turns into a successful campaign. The open geography of China is at least partly to thank for this, but the aggressiveness of the AI and the way armies are trained and deployed play a role as well. I've always been bored to tears by that late game Total War slog of sending a few godlike stacks of elite troops around the map to mop up all resistance with auto resolve battle after auto resolve battle. But even on the default difficulty, Three Kingdoms offered me tense, fairly balanced, exciting battles throughout. The one drawback is that it got a little bit exhausting after a certain point. It's a great change overall, but it might have swung things just a tad too far in the other direction now. I wouldn't mind being able to effortlessly crush a stubborn enemy on their last legs every once in a while, just as a reward for fighting my heart out for so long. One of the cleverest ways the campaign maintains this pressure is by having all of the minor warlords coalesce into the titular Three Kingdoms in the late game. Once you become powerful enough to stake a claim on the Imperial Throne, your two most dangerous remaining rivals will do the same and morph the field from a chaotic free-for-all to a three-way Mexican standoff from which only one ruler can emerge victorious. It provides the same great escalation intention as the Realm Divide mechanic from Shogun 2, but without arbitrarily handing half of your hard-won provinces to rebels. 
The gold dragon ornament on top of all of this is that Three Kingdoms runs like an absolute dream. Every Total War game since Rome 2 has had significant performance issues, even on high-end hardware. But much to my surprise, both the campaign map and the battles glided along like a crane on the wind without even making my GeForce GTX 1070 and i7 4770K break a sweat, even on ultra settings. As a baseline, I was getting almost 50% higher frame rates on the battle map than the recent Thrones of Britannia. I still saw some slowdowns in absolutely titanic clashes involving multiple full-sized armies beefing apocalyptically over a massive fortified city, but not to the same extent that I'm used to with this series. Total War Three Kingdoms should serve as the example for all games of its breed going forward. The campaign design is brilliant, full of character, and tells a cohesive, historical feeling story with satisfying act breaks and unexpected turns of fortune. The improvements to performance and optimization over its predecessors almost make me just want to lean back in my chair and hum contentedly while I watch hundreds of peasant militia hack each other to pieces. Its relentless ability to constantly provide challenging battles can almost seem like too much of a good thing sometimes, but it's still a huge improvement over what came before. Just remember when you're going over resumes to decide who to bring on to lead your next big offensive, do not pursue Lu Bu. For more on Total War, check out a walkthrough of a major battle in Three Kingdoms, and my reviews of Total War Saga Thrones of Britannia and Total War Warhammer 2. And for everything else, stick with IGN.